My initial... expectations met my reality with this album, but I want to hear what Steven has to say because Stevenson had the, the hottest of takes prior to the album's release. Man, initial thoughts, man. I love this project. From the first track to the very last one. It's just, it's a very enjoyable listen from front to back, especially like you're like me, who like listening to albums to, for that from first song to last. There's definitely a lot of songs you can place on the playlist here, like Scapegoats, uh, not, sorry, not Scapegoats, Pink Panties, hilarious, Trademark USA, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Rain Brothers, uh, Issues One More Deeper, Baby Team Cuts, his catalog. And it really had a level of depth and um, introspection that, that I think artists need to at least know who they are. Why you can do all the wild fun shit, but like songs like these make us more relatable to the to the to the um the act as well. There are some very cringy bars though. I will not lie about that. But I think what overshadows a lot of them is how he delivers them and his personality that he showcases throughout this track. Especially with the range on Range Brothers, where he's delivering a song in like four, three to four different ways in terms of delivery. From the beginning to end, with each switch, with each beat switch, it felt like a different song, mm -hmm. and it wasn't. It was. Show, it wasn't showcasing the range of like. I took it as not like subject matter, but from from of stretching the syllables out, delivery, um, the beat, um, showing that you know him and Kendrick play off each other, especially when Kendrick started rapping, where Kendrick's talking more about the successes or like the, the things that come to fame, and Baby Keem is bringing that more grounded type of atmosphere which is really which was surprising on the first listen but you expect that to be the other way around so like that really showcased a lot so i think there's a lot of subtleties that really helped the album there were a lot of cuts on this thing where i was really just captivated and um immersed in just the experience of listening to it i was like really just vibing with like trademark usa uh obviously range brothers yeah obviously range brothers obviously coco and obviously, family ties. Um, when I, I wish he threw hooligans because yes, hooligans, hooligans was my shit. Like last October, September, like a year ago at this point, he dropped this uh, hooligans, and I, I wouldn't even care if it was a year after the release when he just threw it on the album because hooligans was so lit. I was gonna say because if you notice, all his cover themes always for for the past year has been one color in like, the, like five different shades, yeah. and that's when. You can hear any song he's dropped from no, uh, Sons and Critics, Hooligans, um, No Sense, Do Rag Activity. They all could have been on this album mm -hmm. and they would have fit perfectly well. Because th there's, like I was mentioning, there's a lot of range here in terms of vibe, in terms of like, one of my favorite songs here is Lost Souls. And that's one of those very more slower cuts and much more emotional. But like, it worked really well in the context of the album. So he made the album, I feel like, like a lot of people try to do where like they try to fit all kinds of different sounds and um atmospheres and moves into one and he captured that perfectly cohesively through album. I don't know. I was very happy with this one. I, I actually really did like Pink Panties on my on the first listen. I wasn't like I wasn't crazy about it, but then I kinda I, I got into it a little bit more. Um trademark. That's USA. a context piece. Yeah. Uh Pink, Pink Panties, Panties is like is it's all about piece. like when when you listen to it, how are you feeling when you listen to it? Yeah. And I love Trademark USA. Uh, Scapegoats, I thought was an amazing interlude. And then you dive into mm -hmm. Range Brothers. And one of, actually, I think my favorite song on the project might be from the back half, either Boo Man or 16, which are two very 16, different yeah. songs. Yeah. But 16 is yeah. an amazing outro. And I think that might be one of Baby Keem's best, like, lyrically emotional songs or, like, lyrically dense songs. The back end was really strong. I really liked Boo Man. I thought... That was just such a, a a really dope swing in that very like um mm -hmm. it had a little bit of a dark tropical feel it to like, it. And yeah, I was gonna say it was like Jungle Cruise vibes. Yeah, right. It reminded me of yeah. uh the Donkey Kong video game I used to play. But what makes this album more than anything is the aesthetic of mm -hmm. just like it's it is something so unique. But in that, it's something that bridges both two totally different sides of where rap is right now because he's got this this uh, energy about him this. Uh, demeanor about him that's kind of like that gives those lyrical heads what they want like that like fits in the niche of like people like obviously his cousin Kendrick but like the Sminos and Zabas where it's like you're, you're gonna step to the mic and you're gonna say something for the most part but he's a little bit more laissez-faire about it and he can 
he really does deliver that those ideas with that that uh energy the the energy of people like cardi but uh I would I would add on to say I think his delivery his is much more varied than that as well, not mm-hmm. just high and, and like he there was very subtle like um him and Kendrick has this thing where they can really manipulate their voice really well it makes what they say sound even cooler and that's like sometimes I think it's a stupid thing for me to, to judge it by but like I think if you sound cool whatever you say I don't give a fuck what you're saying yeah it's more about <laughs> how they say it than what they say he knows how to use his voice really well as an instrument both melodically and delivery wise i think that helps them a lot there's a lot of mood switches here that just worked mm-hmm. from one to another and i'm like and then he offered the depth the emotional um you know observational depth around a um, situation around him that not made him feel out of touch and just like a party rapper or just one like whatever you want to call it but a more so grounded artist he's just like i can resonate with some of this on a personal level you're looking for a good album i think a really good album to just have fucking fun to just a fun listen put this on put no matter what you're doing put this on road trip going to the gym playing getting hyped for a basketball pickup game at the park whatever you're doing cleaning that's that's another thing that you i think we, we have to look at um people have to look at as well albums this album's fun as hell to listen to period I can see one of these, I, I can see this album, maybe not the album of the year, because I truly believe it's top five albums, hip hop albums of the year. But oh, yeah, for it's sure. the one that sure would define the year. Whereas like you think of 2021 hip hop, you're going to mention um, Baby Came album. You're yeah. going to mention this album. Especially what? just considering the time it came out, because it, it's like the fact that it's able to compete this hard right after the release of CLB and Donda, and like people are talking about it, like just like they were talking about, like maybe not just like they were and talking a lot about of and, Donda. and a lot and of so people are same, saying it's better same, than like, both of those projects. Yeah, I mean, I'm one of them. But like, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't I mean, find I'm one of them too. <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I put this in this category of mine where. I don't know, an album will come out, like a hip hop album will come out once every few months. And for me, that feels like just a reflection of where hip hop is right now. Like the mm-hmm. last one that came out where I felt that way, it was, I said this about the IDK album. And like maybe before that, it was the Mina album that came out a year ago. Like every mm-hmm. few months, there is just that hip hop album that is like perfectly in the center of where hip hop is. Cause it's a spectrum right now where it's like, you have your lyrical miracles. You got your your hype ass motherfuckers making the Cardi shit, and the and then you've got like I don't know. It's it is such a spectrum right now, but like this is like the focal point. Welcome to the Track Life YouTube channel. We are the New Music Release Club. I am Dom. I'm Aiden. And I'm Stevenson. Here's the links at the bottom of the YouTube page. Subscribe and check out more content from the Music Release Club. Yeah, check out our album reviews. We also got live sessions, raw stream, all that good stuff right here on the Track Life YouTube page.